Hi everyone, my name is Aubrey Watt and today we're going to be doing some fun with text. This is not at all an exhaustive tutorial on text, it's just to give you an idea of some things that you can do. And probably the number one thing that you can do to make your text look good on your book cover is to install a font that really works well with your book cover. And I just want to show you a couple of fonts that I think worked really well. In my uh, cowboy story, I used this western font that I think turned out really nicely. Um, in my Paris story, I had this nice script font that worked well. So really, a, a good font can make your cover look so much better than anything else you could possibly do. And I get my fonts from a couple of different places. I just want to show you one because at Font Squirrel, it's 100% free commercial use fonts. So you can go here and just spend hours looking through the site and pick your favorite font. And they do also have uh, an option to browse by style. So for example, if you know you want a script font, you can just look at the script page. Do be careful when you're picking out pretty fonts. Sometimes an interesting font, like this is a very pretty font, it won't show up very well as a book title. So make sure that your book title is not just pretty, it's also legible. And whenever you find a font that you think would work nicely, you can download the file. Normally what that'll do is save it as a zip file. If you have WinZip, you can just open it up in that. If you don't have a zip program, I would recommend using 7-Zip. It's a nice open source program that works really well. And you just open it up like that. And there's a little install button at the top. And after you install it, it should be available to use in GIMP. Um, the only other thing, if it's not, is you might need to move the folder to the GIMP font folder. Um, if you have questions about that, just leave them in the comments. And then you're going to have to close GIMP and open it back up in order to see that font, but it should pop up in your font list in your font list once you have the text tool selected. So you can just pick whichever fonts, and I have a bajillion <laughs> because I'm a little font collector. I hoard fonts. <laughs> All right. Uh, once you have your font selected and used in your book cover, the other thing that you can do to really make the text pop is by outlining your text or by putting a drop shadow in. Now outlining your text, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you the way that I do it because I think it's pretty simple. The first thing I do is all of my text layers, I just go ahead and duplicate them. You can see they have the copy. And the reason I do that is because I always get worried that I want to change it. And if I want to change it, then I want to be able to have the original text to play around with. So here I have all my copies up here, and what I'm going to do is merge them together. Merge down, merge down, and now this will be just all of the text. I'm going to go ahead and turn these off because I don't need this. If I turn this off, notice it's all of the text put together. And if you wanted to move the words around, you still have them to play around with down here. All right. Now what I do for outlining is I select by color and then I just click anywhere in the text and it should outline the outlines of all the letters. The next thing to do is to create a new layer and I'm going to call it outline. Make sure that it's transparent. And then oh, let's see. I'm going to go back to what you probably have it as. So probably you're going to be starting with a uh, black right here and just a normal paintbrush. So I'm going to start with that just to show you what that does if you do a, a stroke selection is what it's called. So what you're going to do is go to edit down to stroke selection and it's probably going to be up here stroke line but you want to stroke it with the paint tool. Now notice what happens is with this black circle brush, what it's done is it went around and it outlined all these letters. Um, let me select something else. There we go. It looks kind of yucky right now, but if you move the text layer above the outline layer, then the outline goes to the background and it just kind of makes it pop. And this is nice, but if you wanted to add other stuff, like I'm going to add a different layer. So again, for the text, I'm just going to select that text, add a new layer, and I'm going to say outline number two. 
And what I'm going to do is do a fuzzy kind of yellow outline just to show you some, some of the nice things that you can do. Now here you're going to be using your paintbrush so choose a nice fuzzy thing like a circle fuzzy. You can make it bigger or smaller. And in order to choose the color I'm going to use the color picker tool and actually pick a color from my cover already. Notice if I click here it doesn't do anything because I'm in the wrong layer. This is the biggest problem with GIMP. Be careful to make sure you're in the right layer. But if I click this layer now I can select this nice yellow color and I'm going to use that as my outline color. So in the paintbrush now I have yellow and fuzzy. So when I go back to my outline 2 and do select uh, I'm sorry, edit stroke selection and stroke it with the paint tool. What that's going to do is it's going to stroke it with that yellow fuzzy outline. And again, you can see it's on top. If you wanted it underneath, you just move the text above it. And the nice thing about this is you can like turn them on and off to see if they look better with or without the outlines that you have. Maybe you want to move this one above it. Um, and another thing that you can do is add in drop shadows. Now for that you'll just need to have the text layer selected. Uh, again I'm going to select by color and just select the text. And then you'll go to filters, light and shadow, and then whoop, I chose the wrong one there. I don't want my text to be sparkly but I suppose you can. <laughs> so I want filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. And I'm just going to use what they have right here to show you, and normally I think this starts over at like 80, to show you what that does. It'll create a new layer for you called drop shadow. And let me get rid of the other outlines so you can see what the drop shadow actually is. So it's to the right and down a little bit and it's just kind of like a shadow for all your letters and if you want to go back and forth to see what the effect actually is you can and you add in that yellow outline Ooh, it looks pretty and whatever you decide to use you can just delete the other layers that you're not using um, or just leave them there if you think you might use them later now some other stuff to think about is using all caps for your fonts versus using you know uh, some letters capitalized, some not. Play around with it. Uh, use different colors maybe to emphasize a word or even different fonts. The one thing that you don't want to do is use a bunch of different fonts and make it look all crazy. Try to make the, the fonts work with each other, tie together. And this is not at all exhaustive. There's a bunch of different things you can do. For example, if you go to filters and then alpha to logo, there's a like a list of different types of things you can do with your text to make it look cool. I've used the neon before. Um, they have like comic books effects and things like that, an alien glow. So um, what you can do there is again just select by color and then choose any of these. I'm not going to go through any of them, but there are GIMP tutorials out there for just about any of these that you want to, uh, that you might think of using, and play around with it. This is where you can have some fun and make your text kind of pop out of, uh, out of your book cover to make it look nice. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions or anything like that, leave them in the comments, um, and thanks for watching.